Welcome back to another episode of the Mizzou Storytellers Podcast. Hello, Dave. Hey, Nikki. It's been a while. I know. Well, we did a little live podcast action, so hopefully everyone listened that to that. That was like but two weeks ago, wasn't it? Um, Technically, I think like a week and a half. Yeah. So we, we haven't, haven't really been in studio in almost two weeks. We haven't like debriefed on the uh, live podcast yet. No, we What'd haven't. What you think? I think it was great. It was really cool. It was very windy. It was so windy. There are some unflattering photos of me surfaced, but and that's I okay. made sure to take screenshots and send them to you. Well, and what was interesting is I was trying not to bring attention to the fact that the wind was taking over my life, but yeah, I everything went flying at one point. The jerseys were whipping around, my hair was going everywhere, but no, it was great. I think it was really cool to talk to you know um, both our guests and to have three a of live. our guests. We had three guests. Well, we did have three guests. Yes, yeah. um, have our th- our three guests on live, which was cool for people yeah. to see. And I think people kind of just moseyed on around. Yeah, we. Uh, it was great. Producer Steve, big shout out because he did and a great Producer job. Andrew. Andrew too, setting it up uh, right there on the concourse. We're we're kind of right in the m- behind that bounce house there. So um, I don't yeah. know if everyone saw us as much yeah. as they could, but they heard us. We were yeah. we were on the concourse live, and it was it was awesome. It was a Beautiful day. A little windy. It was a little windy. It was a cool experience. I think we 10 out of 10 should do again, though. Absolutely. So, but Now that it's actually spring. I know. Now that it's spring. It's we should do something else, yeah. See where we can get, get out to. Well, you were gone all week, last week. I was gone. I was at the SEC Gymnastics Championship. I was lucky enough to volunteer with the SEC, so that was a very cool experience yep. in New Orleans. Um, I in did New have Orleans, yeah. I did have my, what? Yeah, I said New oh. Orleans. <laughs> I thought you were making I was fun agreeing of me. with you. You were in New Orleans. <laughs> yes, um, I did have beignets for those that are wondering. So that was lovely. Um, it was my birthday, so I got to celebrate down there, which was very nice. Um, had a very nice Italian dinner, which I know I should have had Cajun food. I did have Cajun food, but it's okay. You had a and you had sushi and Italian food in New Orleans. Yeah, did I you don't get lost or something. No, I don't love spicy food, and I don't love fish, so. I did what I could. I had Cajun chicken pasta the first night, and that was delicious, yeah. but that was probably all I needed. Yeah. So. Was it a special birthday dinner then? Um. Yeah. I mean, I went out with the group that I was with, yeah. um, so it was nice. They they did a good job of making me feel special. We were working long days. I was in the Smoothie King Center for like 10, 12 hours, so uh-huh. it was, they did a good job of making it. An awesome did the waiter like come over and s- did they sing to you? N- no, there was no singing, but I don't love singing, so to that's, me, that's I don't like singing to, to me, it's but like my your, grandma, your... she did sing to me, so my grandma and her, her partner, they, every birthday, they'll call at early, but they didn't call that early, my mom warned them yeah. that I was working, so they called, and then they, they will sing happy birthday, not hi, hello, it's just go right into happy birthday, yeah. and then usually it's just... Okay, have a great day. And they don't they don't really chat. They no just want to sing. No, just it. They just want to sing happy what, birthday. What was the best birthday present you got and why was it mine? Um, well it was obviously Smoothie King's gift card. Yeah. Twenty six dollars because I turned twenty six. Yeah. So thoughtful. Yes. So uh, when I was there, this is fabulous for me. We ordered Smoothie King for lunch one day and so I s- volunteered to put it on my Smoothie King account because I wanted all the points. So Seventy dollars worth of Smoothie King wow. was ordered for a group of people, not just for oh, me. They're welcome. So, oh no, I didn't use your gift card. That's oh, okay. being okay. saved. But now I have all this these points. So imagine all of the smoothie wow. bowls. Wow. So yeah, did but it was a great. Did you use your new pens? No, I have them in my office. I don't. So I, people steal them. So I like. Oh. am very okay. scarce with my pens. Oh, that's but nice. That's those yeah. are nice. And those are my pens from Dave Matter, not for anyone else. So, okay. but how was your week in the office? Uh, it was, uh, it was great. Good. It was, uh, it w- no, it wasn't great cause you weren't there. You know, it was sad. Nope. No podcast. <laughs> we, lots uh, of tears. lots of tears. We got through it though. Just, just fine. It was, uh, just plugging along. Yeah. We've reached uh, like, a. we're busy with s- spring sports, but we're kind of coming out of the winter sports. Yeah. So we're in this weird lull where things are, feel like are slowing down. They're still very busy, but they're also, right. It's either hit or miss. I feel like it's a super busy weekend or there's nothing at all. Yeah, it's like a good time to start planning ahead for other things that are going to mm-hmm. happen this summer and the fall. And yeah. I know that's what we're doing I on feel like my we're side of things. Blink and it's going to be. Don't say that. So, but it's all good. We've it's got a lot life. of podcasts to do. So many episodes. So many. We have a good one today. Very excited. I'm excited for our guest. I'm excited because I 
this is someone I'm close with that I've known that has been here since I've been here. And so I'm excited to, to share their story. Okay, should we just go for it now? Yeah, let's get All into right, it. Let's go. Hardworking, kind, and innovative, a legit 6'5", tall, strong-armed quarterback, associate director, associate athletic director of marketing and fan experience, he is Tony Daniel, and this is his story. Hi, Tony. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thank you, you for putting my height and weight out there for all the... <laughs> there was no weight. <laughs> I didn't yeah. put your weight out there. Legit 6'5". Yeah. I'm just writing, saying what the articles have written. The it's actually a quote, right? It's it a direct a quote. It is a direct quote from an article from 2000. And Nine or ten? What, uh, what year are we in? We have found some other I just did my quotes. research. Oh, there's other quotes. Great. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> and okay. I'm out here there reporting so what the people have already reported on. Well, we're so happy to have you here. Um, we can't wait to get to know more about you and hear your story. I think we like to start with, what is your job at here at Mizzou Athletics? What does it mean to be an Associate Athletic Director of Marketing Fan Experience? Um, talk a, a little bit about that for us. Yeah, I think that's the fun part. I think we we talk about it a lot um, that no two days really look the same. We you never know what's going to come across your desk. Um, some days, you know, you're running football and basketball games. Some days you're doing Mizzou Madness uh, out in front of the columns. Some days you're, you know, advertising and and doing stuff for for fans in different ways. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I think that's been my favorite part of the job. Like I said, no two days are the same. It's been um, an amazing experience here at Mizzou. There's uh, in, in the growth in the my five almost six years here has been has been really really cool. Um, but yeah, the, I mean the day to day is like I said, you just never really know. It's hard to hard to pinpoint exactly what it would be. But um, really, our goal is to to make Mizzou fans happy, to have them enjoy the fan experience as much as possible. Anytime they're at our venue, fans are stepping into our buildings and into our arenas. Um, you know, for the first time sometimes, and that's what we always, like, tell ourselves and our staff to, to remember. So that's that's what we pride ourselves on and, and giving fans the best experience possible. We've, we've had a few of our fellow administrators here in the podcast, but Tony's probably the first one that fans probably have seen because you, you are, yeah. especially if they've come to a basketball game, they see you running around with the headset on when, when you're – you guys are not flip-flopping your, your roles or whatever. Or if they've come to a spring game, they know you're the guy with the mic – Telling everybody how many minutes they have left until uh, autographs until the over. autographs are over. Um, how much? I mean, your your job is kind of half behind the scenes and half kind of out in front, just leading the the pack on on game days. Like, how do you like the the two different? It, it's not even two different roles. You have a million different roles. But what do you enjoy most about all the different things you do for us? Oh man, um, yeah. I mean, it is. It's a little little combination of both. Like you said, you're. Some days you're in in the front. Some days you're you're behind the scenes and and making everything everything happen uh, on the fan front. Um, you know, I, when I first got here, I took the like the like being out in front. And we we tell our our student our interns this all the time. Like you're some of the first people that our fans are going to yeah. see when they walk in the door. So for games, I like to go up and be part of like whatever giveaway. Like we we got lightsabers for basketball. I like going up there and like seeing a kid come in and get their lightsaber and turn it on and, and like love that experience. Like they might be just as excited about that as they see, you know, whoever go and, and make a big dunk or a big play or a big three. So that, that to me is like what, why we, we do it. We love supporting our student athletes and, but, but being there for the fan experience and the fan journey is, is why we do what we do. And um, I think that's one of my, my most favorite parts. And that's just one small example of yeah. tons you know, you go out to Mizzou Madness and you see these people walk up and see the, the atmosphere for the first time. It's really cool and, and really fun, you know, just to be a part of that and be able to make that stuff happen. Yeah, you also might have a stronger arm than the T-shirt can, and we'll get to, to that <laughs> soon yeah, enough. Yeah, T-shirt toss up on his list of things he likes to do. That is, that's a top 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 five on the, on the list of Just showing off things. again. Yeah, that's but I feel doing. like you do it, do it sparingly. Like, you only go out every, you know, you're just, you like save it for special moments. Yeah, so. every so often you gotta got to keep it, keep your arm fresh. This episode of Mizzou Storytellers on the Inside Mizzou Athletics podcast is brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Ranked number one in customer satisfaction for auto insurance in the central region by J.D. Power five out of the last six years. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Um, obviously, you've been at Mizzou for six years, but this is not where you started. So let's go back to Georgia. You grew up there. Talk about what it was like growing up in Georgia. Yeah, born and raised um, in, in Dallas, Georgia. 
Paulding County and uh, was there yeah, all through elementary, middle, and high school. Um, loved sports. I, I played football. I'm sure we're getting there at some point. But um, didn't really start football until, like for real, until eighth grade. My coach knew I played baseball. That was kind of where I thought I was going to go. Um, and he was like, I, I know you're a pitcher. I know you, you can throw. Like, why don't you just come out and play quarterback for our eighth grade team? I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And so I went out. I, I am relatively tall, so that's a nice quality to have in um, in quarterback play. You can you can see the field and see things going on. And I just I loved it. I kind of stopped playing baseball after that. Went the football route um, through high school. Really enjoyed my time in high school. I had a great coach, Tim Glanton, that that loved like helping his high school kids get recruited. And that's you know kind of how my path started. And um, yeah, my family and I went on a whirlwind tour. To, to get recruited as back in those days, there wasn't really, that sounds weird, it's back in those days, I like it was forever ago, but <laughs> in 2009, 10, and 11, there wasn't like social media, you could just send your highlight tape on a CD to coaches, and they had some, some a few online platforms, but you, that's that's how it was, and we went around, I went I went everywhere, my dad and my mom took me everywhere to... Oh, so. we know, there's, there's, some, there's some video evidence of that, <laughs> if you look hard enough. <laughs> yeah, um, you have a twin. Uh, I have a twin sister, yes. Yes, who love her. She's fabulous. So what was it like growing up not only with a sister but a twin? Um, I have a sister, and Dave has a sister, but you have a twin. I feel like it's different when you have a twin. So talk about your relationship with her and what what it was like. <laughs> yeah, we. I love Carly. She. We had our times, of course. We were yeah. brother and sister. You, you butt heads, um, especially the same age because all of our friends were pretty much the same, um, and I did things like rude things and mean things to her a lot. And... Um, but no, we had a great time. You always have a, you always have somebody to hang out with. You always have somebody to, to play with. We went to church and to, to school together growing up. They did separate our classes early on. Yeah. Um, kin- or pre-K, we were together, and then kindergarten, they're like, all right, we're going to separate them, let them build their own lives, build their own friends, and then it was all basically the same anyway. So they tried, though. They tried to separate us early on. Um, but yeah, she's great. She, um, she works at Disney currently. Um, which is great for our family and our friends because all of our friends get to use those perks and when yes. they go down to Disney nice. and she's tour, tour guide Barbie around uh, the Disney parks. So, um, yeah, we love it. She's the best. She's awesome. I had to ask about her. So you touch on you started in baseball and then you kind of narrowed down that football was your thing and you touched on your recruiting. What kind of where did you land school wise when you were like getting down to it? All right, you're a junior, you're a senior, you got to go to all those places, and you've talked about how you really took advantage. And I think that's one thing about you you take advantage of every experience that you I, I've known you for three years now, and like every time there's an opportunity, you're going to take advantage of it. And I, we had talked about during your recruiting, like you were like, I went everywhere, like you were like, yeah. I had the opportunity and I took it, which I think is great. So when you were kind of narrowing down, what was it looking like, and how were you deciding? Because Spoiler, you went to Buffalo, which is very far away from Georgia. Sure. So talk about, yes. So talk about kind of how you narrowed in on Buffalo as a school and what your mindset was. Yeah. Originally, so I, they still do this, but you can get, like as a recruit, you can get tickets to any game. Mm-hmm. So me and my dad took the opportunity just to go to any SEC game that we wanted to. Nice. We lived in Georgia. Playing so the system. Went, nice. Yeah. We just went everywhere. Um, so we, we did that at first, and we, we traveled everywhere and, and went recruiting and did all the things um, that came with that. Um, but then it started, like, turning into, like, real visits and, like, going to camps. And um, we ran a weird offense in my high school. I wasn't, like – we ran, like, triple option at times, and that's not what I'm great at. I, I do run pretty well as a, as a quarterback. Oh, but, we know. We know. But that's not, that's you let not everyone like know that too. What, I, <laughs> what I wanted to do necessarily – um, so I got not overlooked, but like people weren't really on my radar at, at that point. So like when I would go to these camps, they're like, Oh wait, you like throw a little better than we thought, or you're a little more athletic than we thought. So I would go to these camps and, and these coaches would see me and I would have some relationship with them. And then we'd, there's like this, so there's a camp and then there's like this secret camp that happens after the, the camp. So you go to this camp and then you go to the secret camp where they, bring the receivers and the quarterbacks and the running backs that they think they might like look at a little heavier offer. They, some of these guys probably already had offers and I was just there as part of that little group. So yeah, we would always go to those. I, I, I don't, couldn't even count. Like we, we went to 
30, 40 camps probably over my my junior and senior summers. Um, and then, yeah, Buffalo was, was my first offer. Um, they came in early on my junior year and offered me um, – it was a great place. Like those coaches were, were, were coming over from the staff at Cincinnati. Um, I got to meet some of the players on, you know, those junior days and, and recruiting visits. And I was nervous about the cold. I didn't really know what I was getting into with that. And everybody told me, and, but you still really just really don't know until you're up there and you're in it. Um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed Buffalo. It was down to them and, and Troy and Vanderbilt were kind of my last three that were, that were really in the mix. Um, Troy made a lot of sense sense because it was closer to home, but it just didn't fit. They had they had hired or um, recruited another quarterback that was kind of in my class, and so it just didn't work out. And Buffalo worked out, and and I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was it was really really great um, outside of the weather and the cold practices and some of the games, but um, it was a great place, and and I really really grew a lot there in my time. Before you pick Buffalo, rival, Rivals.com story from, uh, let's see, June 22nd, him, 2010. Boy, we're really... I'm six foot five, and I'll sit in the pocket, but I run it now, too. We throw some option in there. We've got some zone reads, so we run it at our school. That, that That's what's been surprising some people. They don't think that I can, but I'm a little bit more athletic than they think. That's so just I, as you Tony said Daniel. right here, it was what you said. Yeah. Way back 14 then. years ago, were you were you misquoted or was that that was a, that was probably a real that quote. was the and, pitch and 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 seriously that's what when we go with these coaches like it was like almost a carbon copy every single time I went to a camp they're like oh like you were a little more athletic than we thought <laughs> like that's what they would say like oh we're, watching you on tape we didn't think you were quite as athletic I'm like yeah I'm six five and running triple option underneath center it's probably not the most athletic <laughs> positions <laughs> sometimes but. Um, yeah, it was like a carbon copy every single time we went to somewhere. It was like, oh, you, you can you can do a little more than we thought, maybe. And so you can come to this little secret thing that we have later on. There You're you like, hey, come here at this yeah. time. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I said to Tony when I met him, because obviously growing up in Connecticut, I know what it's like to live in the cold. And knowing that Tony was from Georgia, I swear one of the first things I was like, so um, – why did you go to Buffalo from Georgia? Because I went the opposite. I went north to south, and you went south to north. So yeah. I that was one of the first things I ever asked him. I was like, could you explain your decision-making process there? Um, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, not smart on my, my behalf on the, on the weather front. Yeah. Well, so Dave had put a note in here. The 2011 recruiting class was quite stacked with different people. So – um, especially alone. quarterbacks. Um, yeah, you had uh, Manziel, Dak Prescott, Bridgewater, Mariota, and obviously the most important to you. But right. um, did you ever cross paths at any of the like anything? Did you see them like yeah, any of you, that? You cross paths with those guys that I went to Elite Eleven, the Elite Eleven quarterback camp. Um, a number of those guys were there. Uh, just different, yeah, different stuff, yeah. different camps, and some all those guys were way more highly recruited than I was obviously uh but they yeah so you catch them every so often at, at those things and um and then you see your talent and you're like oh that makes sense that's that makes sense why Dak Prescott's probably going to be a, a good <laughs> NFL quarterback <laughs> Don't give yourself more credit what, yeah. what about just the the experience at Buffalo I mean you you stayed the whole time you didn't didn't transfer I mean I and you did five you yeah. were you redshirted and then you did yeah. your four yeah. and you, so you stuck around an extra half a semester technically yeah what was that experience like I mean you weren't you played some. You weren't a starter, but you you saw the field, and you must have enjoyed the experience. If you if you most time backup quarterbacks don't stick around, they usually yeah. go somewhere where they can play more. But you clearly were were happy with the experience. I would I would assume. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it was like I said. Like I said, it was a great place. Um, really enjoyed my time there, and like made some of my best friends in life. Yeah, uh, still talk to all those guys to this day. And I, I think yeah, I mean, the portal obviously wasn't a thing back then. Um, we were actually excited about getting like the cost of attendance stuff going on, <laughs> like in 2013, 14, 15, right in there. Um, got our severance check from the NCAA for the video game, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was a great experience. I think I, actually in my first year there, I went in and <laughs> a little bit surprised that group, like how athletic I was. And th I keep hearing the same things over and over again. I'm like, well, that sounds good. I, I appreciate that. I see where I kind of am in, mm -hmm. in terms of on the depth chart, especially early on. I was like, okay, I see where I am. What what can I do? Can I can I move to receiver? Can I play tight end? Does quarterback still make sense for you all? And they, they wanted me to stay at quarterback, and that's that's where I stuck for a while. Um, well, the whole time. And uh, 
and, and yeah, so I, I think that's that's part of was part of my journey. Uh, but again, I was I was going to school. I, I loved where I was. Um, loved the people that I was was able to be around. Um, like made family there that are going to be at my wedding. Like that's yeah. that's what was important. And and I didn't know it, if moving was the right choice for me, even if there was options for that. Um, my high school coach went into college and he was trying to get me to come home and stuff, but it just didn't make a lot of sense for me at that point. Mm -hmm. Especially, yeah, with how things are now, it might've looked different, but yeah, Yeah. but it was, it was a great experience overall. This episode of the zoo storytellers on the inside Mizzou athletics podcast is brought to you by Sophia's and Addison's restaurants. Sophia's and Addison's restaurants are great local spots to visit before or after all Mizzou home games. Addison's has two locations in Southwest and downtown Columbia and features over 20 beers on tap, including local brewers and, of course, their famous Nachos Bianco. So remember, before or after the game, stop by Addison's. Your first career completion came from a botched field goal snap. And then you, yeah, that's what the website says. Probably. Um, And you also drew a roughing the passer penalty, which set up the touchdown drive. So talk to us about that experience (laughs) that you went through. And did you think that'd be your first career completion and what happened? Yeah. So as a backup, you stand on the sideline in Buffalo in 30 degree weather and you freeze your butt off the whole time. And so my hands are freezing, but I'm also the holder for that year because that's was, I had good hands and that was my, my spot at that, my role at that time. So um yeah we go out there it was i think actually an interview don't go back and look at this i think in the interview i said that the snap was low and that was a complete lie because i went back and watched it later and it was a perfect snap and i just dropped it um (laughs) so i dropped the snap i roll out one way that's a disaster i go the wrong way that i'm not supposed to ever go you're supposed to go the opposite way um so i go the wrong way and then i turn back around i stiff arm this guy turn back around and go the other way and our our blocking tight end was just out there and I lob up the probably the worst pass I've ever thrown in my life. I probably probably would have thrown it better left-handed, honestly. Um, he caught it and the guy just drilled me underneath the chin. My actually the um, little thing that holds your lip on your your teeth there yes. got ripped off. Oh, um, yeah. My my chin strap like went up and pushed my face mask up into my mouth. So, so there was blood involved. Lots in your... of blood involved. But we got the first down. Went down. Went down and and got the touchdown <laughs> to tie. I think the game at that point. And then we later on came back. And so that's the best part of the story is that we had to come back for the game winning field goal from even further. And I was like, oh great, I'm gonna have to hold this again. But we we did fine and made the. They didn't replace you. You got to remain. I got to go right back wow. out there like two drives later. Yeah, and and we. We did our thing. That's and toughness. Made the, made the field goal. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's right. I didn't know there was blood involved. That was not reported. The blood was involved. Yeah. You had like a really famous teammate, Khalil Mack, was on those teams. Like yes. potential Pro Football Hall of Famer one day. Should like be, how many yeah. how many times did he tackle you in practice? Oh God. Uh, early on, a lot. And when I was in scout teams, so in the Mac, uh, I don't know if the listeners remember Jordan Lynch days. Oh yeah. When, yeah. When he was at Northern Illinois. They were had like really great teams. Um, our producer Steve Sowers probably remembers some Northern Illinois, some Northern Illinois days. But um, so we have a lot of running quarterbacks in the MAC. Yeah. So when they found out that I could do that, they're like, "All right, every every you know time, you're the, you're our guy." And they you have to run real reps because these guys are like legit. Right. They're, gonna, they're like legit players. They're they're in the Orange Bowls and stuff like that. So anyway, so he he ate me up a few times. Um, pretty good he's did uh, you he's, ever just like lay on the ground and you're like yeah this guy's gonna go far in life <laughs> yeah you you pretty much just knew there was just a different level when you're when you're at that level like we you know we played big games like we, we play our bye games so we're playing georgia and we play tennessee yeah. and penn state and ohio state and you're watching those games we have less talent but when you're watching the game you're like okay yeah that guy is <laughs> he's the best player on the field at all times and that's when you knew that he's gonna be like he probably should have went one if Clowney wasn't there yeah. in that same draft there's all the hype around him. Khalil probably goes one, um, but yeah, he's a he's a special player. Should be should be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's close. I would, I would think so. Yeah. Um, okay, so NIL was not a thing when you were playing, but if it were, what kind of endorsements would I think we've Tony talked about this? We have had. talked about this. Well, I have. I was not. You were not to part of these conversations. I, I would think yeah. a quarterback with the initials TD would have some offers out there. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, that sells itself. Yeah, I am a sweets guy. I like ice cream. So I would probably have to go like, yeah, some kind of cookie location or ice cream location. There was some good ice cream up in Buffalo, although they are closed in the winter. They like all just like open summer. They, they're not open sense. year round. Like even like the Dairy Queen stuff closed down in the winter. Really? So yeah, just too cold that people don't do they it. Just eat wings instead? 
You eat wings all the time. Yes. I can give you some good recommendations. Okay. Don't go to the ones that, like, the first ones you Google. Don't go to those. I don't have buffalo on my travel itinerary. Niagara Falls. Soon. you got to go see Niagara well, Falls. Well, so, okay, yeah. I was going to ask how soon. many times have you been to Niagara Falls? Because I, I also asked him this when I first met him, and he was like, uh, everyone always wants to go. So he's been... Yeah, I mean, it's like a – so, like, that's a touristy thing to yeah. do there. It's like when you – I don't know, if you live in – when you go to St. Louis, oh, let's yeah. go to the Arch. Like, right, I've right. Been to the Arch a thousand times if you live there. So, yeah, everybody that would come up would be like, oh, we have to go to an Arch. And it's great. Like, I, I will say, like, different from the Arch, you can go, and it's, like, beautiful yeah. and majestic all the time. Um, the Arch is then, beautiful and majestic all the time. Yeah, right. I, 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 I looking out to East St. Louis. Yeah, yeah sorry, English. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I didn't mean to take any shots Depends there. Depends which view you're looking at. <laughs> The, the waterfall, uh, though, is different in the winter. It fr- freezes over, so you can get, like, a whole view. They put lights on it, and so you can get different views um, throughout the year. I don't know if St. Louis quite has the, the colors going on in the arch That's yet. an idea. We can put lights around the arch. Yeah. Like black and cane. gold black yes. and gold lights yeah. next candy time cane. we have a game there. Yeah, Flavored absolutely. For, for the holiday. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. This is where ideas are born <laughs> um, in the Storytellers so podcast. <laughs> so you were obviously in the Mac, a little Mac action. You went to some some fun places there, but where was your favorite place to play that you ever played in college? West Point, Army West Point. Really? Cool. Yeah. So we I mentioned a few of those other ones that we yeah. played at. West Point was beautiful, and I don't know if it's like a tactic that they do. So we went to West Point to play, and we get everybody travels on Friday. You get there on Friday. And usually you just go for a walkthrough of the stadium right. and you go to your hotel and you do your meetings. We got to West Point and they did like a tour of the entire campus oh, wow. basically. So our entire team is walking around campus. We probably walked <laughs> two, three miles. I don't know if that's like a tactic to get us tired before the game or, or what the deal was, but it's beautiful. It's like a, one of the greatest settings in college football. I know it kind of goes under the radar because yeah. Army Army isn't, but it's like right there on the Hudson River. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful location and – and they had great fans. Like obviously, all the their their cadets come yeah. out, and they're like right behind your bench. So that was like one of the most fun environments because they just scream and yell and and all that stuff right behind your bench. And that's not really allowed. I don't think in other places typically you yeah. can't really have the student section behind the the visiting team bench. But um, yeah, really really cool place. And like I said, we played Ohio State and Penn State and Tennessee and Georgia. Um, but what is it, Tuesday nights that the Mac does? Tuesday and Wednesday night Mac action, yeah. I think they get a little Thursday in there now, too, maybe. Yeah, so but. you just love a little Tuesday night football game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love a little, love a little Tuesday night action. Um, how was your bowl game in uh, Idaho? Yeah, they were like, all right, Buffalo, they're already in the cold. Let's just send them to Idaho. <laughs> They'll be fine. You can't go to, like, Hawaii or Well, it was worse Vegas. because we thought we were like, all right, we're setting ourselves up here for, like, Boca Raton Bowl right. or, like, the, the Popeye's Bowl the chi- or the Popeye's um, Bahamas Bowl right. was, like, I think just coming into play. So we're like, all right, we're in a good spot here. We just lost the MAC cha- – or, like, like awesome opportunity to go to the MAC championship game on our in our last game. So we're like, all right, we're still in a good spot. So I think in all of our minds, we we're like, all right, we're going to Florida or we're going to the Bahamas or at least Birmingham, like getting out of here. <laughs> at least Birmingham. <laughs> and then we went to Boise. I will say, Boise, the bowl game was phenomenal. Like those people love it up there. They love having that bowl game. They were they were great hosts. It snowed like three of the five, yeah. six days that we were there. <laughs> so we were right at home. Um but it was it was really fun. It was we we didn't play really well, but it was. Who'd uh, you play? It was a great experience. San Diego State. San Diego State. Morgan Dominic might have been a student at Boise State when he played a bowl game there. Yeah, we should. Two thousand thirteen. She, I think, would have been there. Yeah. Because I think you're. Look at that. It's age. all connected. Yeah. I don't know if she would have gone to the the bowl game there. <laughs> the students were gone for break for sure. Yeah. Because we were out on the town. Yeah. At times. Ooh. Uh, nothing crazy, but. It was, you're you know, exploring the you're, town. Yeah, that's what you do. You go, you're there you go for out, many days. Hang out. You're in Boise, Idaho. What Eating else potatoes. Yeah. Eating potatoes. Yeah. So. All right, so you went to school for teaching. You thought you were going to be a teacher. And then you were like, just kidding, don't want to do that. Um, at what point did you kind of decide, I don't think this teaching thing's for me? Um, I don't know that I ever, like, decided that it wasn't for me. I, I really enjoy it, and I think, like, we get you get parts of that in, in, in every job a little bit, but – I think I just enjoyed being in college athletics. I didn't really know that these kind of opportunities existed. So when I got to college and and was playing football and then started working in the athletic department and was like helping run social media for the football team while playing and stuff, like opportunities just presented themselves. Um, our AD changed. We had really great ADs while I was at Buffalo. Ward Manuel was was my first yeah. one, 
Um, he went to UConn and then over to Michigan after that, obviously. And then um, Danny White came in after that, and he was there for the duration of my time. Um, and so Danny, like, really mentored me, and I kind of just got involved with him and just, like, asked what it took to be part of college athletics. And um, he really turned that place around, put it on a completely – different trajectory than it was and I just enjoyed that part I enjoyed again the fan experience and I worked whatever games I could <laughs> I wasn't working football games for right for being there but if I was I was watching everything that was going on on the video boards and stuff as I was standing on the sidelines when so I probably that's been really attention. why you dropped the snap yeah yeah <laughs> probably yeah I was probably worried about what 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 marketing promotion they were doing the, the time out before um but yeah, I, like I said, I just think it was more of a more of an opportunity that I that I saw and, and, and like I loved being in college athletics. I loved playing sports growing up, and I this was close enough. I, I thought about coaching for a long time. That's where, kind of where the teaching part came in. Um, but yeah, I just think that the, the opportunities presented themselves, and it and it worked out where I found something that I enjoyed and was arm's length away from the from the coaching. So play, you so. were running the team's Twitter account while you were a player on the team. I, I mean that is like that's what Sam Horn like running the then? Mizzou football media Twitter account <laughs> while Brady's starting. Yeah. R- uh, rough that is what they were. <laughs> I wasn't obviously live tweeting the game. The, the other people took over during That'd that. But like the week like the weekly stuff, like they, they they viewed it as like, oh this is awesome. Like we have inside access <laughs> to <laughs> to Mizzou or to, to uh, uh, Football, the football team. Tony's there. tweeting, team got pizza for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I was, you know, I had a GoPro. I was making videos and making graphics and doing all kinds of weird stuff that I probably had no business doing at that point. You, If you were doing that now, you'd be called an influencer. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. That's, I, was, I was inside the locker room, and it was like the, gr- the greatest. That's what we all thought. It was like, oh, this is, this is smart. We should have all our teams do this. We shouldn't. Free labor, too. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah exactly. they're like, oh, you want to do this? Yeah. This episode of Mizzou Storytellers on the Inside Mizzou Athletics podcast is brought to you by Socket Fiber. Socket Fiber is now available, the fastest, most reliable internet combined with local service and simple billing. Contact Socket today for voice, data, and internet services for your home and businesses. 1-800-SOCKET-3 or visit socket.net. Um, if you, kind of going back to the teaching, if you were to be a teacher, what would you teach? Kindergarten. That's always what I thought I would want to do. My, so my mom was a, a teacher, and she taught kindergarten. Um, so I just always thought I, I wanted to do that. I always helped, like when I was in middle school and high school, I would come back and help like her class and <laughs> do that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I just enjoyed that age. When I was at Buffalo, I was like in the, the daycare because I was still on that track. So I helped in the daycare area and, and all that. I just really enjoyed that and loved it. Okay, well, now, so now he's in charge of the marketing intern, so it's pretty much the same it's thing. It's basically like much. kindergarten yeah. some days. Okay, so for whatever reason, this is totally – Dave's going to be really lost. For whatever reason, when you said when I was younger, it made me think of your javelin story. How you <laughs> – <Yeah. laughs> so please ask Dave if he thinks this is normal. It's not normal. I already know that. But, Dave. Yes. Do you know the – so, like <laughs> – This is so off script, but – This is very <laughs> off script. On power lines – I don't even know what the script is, but it's definitely off script. I can already tell. On power lines, you know how they have those anchor um, lines? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, and they yeah, put those, I like, mean, yellow vaguely, casings or sure, orange casings sure. over them. Yes. So that people don't hit them. Right. Okay, well, I used to sit, like, lay on my back with <laughs> and throw them in the air because they're not connected, like, the yellow parts. Oh, yeah, And yeah. slide them up that. Sure. So I put that on Twitter one day, and Nikki thought that was the weirdest thing. Some people, there was like two people that, that had done that as well. And he was like, like, oh, it's like throwing a javelin. I'm it's like, like throwing a javelin. You sit on your back, and you just launch it. Was it like exercise? No, you just, I don't know. I was a weird kid. <laughs> oh, this was as a child. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I thought you meant like in your 20s. <laughs> I mean, it's still fun. I would probably do it. Producer Steve has a comment, but he doesn't have a head. Yeah. Yes. yes. The, the yellow covers, covers there, on they're the like telephone an line. And you can just, yeah, just, they just like come back. Yeah, you just sit there and throw. Your it hometown there. sounds really exciting. I was throwing <laughs> the javelin for a while. Like the sound of my foot on the green water. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But you also used to do like leaf. Didn't you do something with leaves as well? Leaf ma- <laughs> mazes. We are off. We are off the rails. Anymore. This is insane. <laughs> oh, just yes. wait. Oh, it gets worse? No. No, it doesn't get worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Never. 
<laughs> yeah, I so when I was a weird kid, I after I got done, you were weird. You were after I got kid. done throwing the javelin in the front yard, I would go to the backyard and we had all kinds of trees in the back, and I would rake leave paths for my friends and family to come and walk around, and we would have like directional signage for each way and. Wow, this has just turned into... More free labor, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, my mom loved it. <laughs> Actually, it was not good because it would make the house... I think dirty. it's a twin thing. My, I have twins, and they're weird, and they do weird no, things. Tony, I don't think Tony's weird. I just, I knew what we were doing. This, <laughs> As like, she brings up another <laughs> yeah, strange what else, what else habit of your I childhood. Say in confidence <laughs> Nothing <that> is... <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you said it to a group of people, just not for the podcast, but okay. then I had to bring it up. All right, okay, going back to the actual script. You go to Ole Miss to be a GA. So what was that opportunity? You, you've decided, I want to work in sports. You've done social media. You're done being a student athlete. You get the Ole Miss GA position. Um, what was your time like there, and what did you learn, and how did it kind of shape your – Yeah, as you do, you email when you're, a, <laughs> when you're a, uh, an intern. You start emailing just thousands of people. I probably sent 400 emails. Luckily, producer Steve and the Ole Miss crew uh, – Got my resume, thought it was good enough. We did a few interviews, and uh, I, I got on down there as a GA, and it was a blast. Like I, you're playing football at a at a small Division One school, and you go to an SEC school that is coming off beating Alabama two years in a row. Sorry, Nikki. Uh, and she didn't play. It's fine. Yeah, and <laughs> they're really riding high. Like they've got like top notch recruits coming in. Um, really great things going on. So it was just like night and day. And then you get down there to the Grove and you're like, it's one of those things. I always tell people that um, it's a place you just have to go and visit. You can't really explain it. I try to tell my family, my friends, and you just have to, to, to go and see and experience it for yourself. So my first game working there was after Ole Miss had beat Alabama, whatever year that was, 2015, 2016, uh, they came back to, to Oxford. And so that was my first ever football game working. It wow! Was it was September. Yep. I was there. You were there. I went there. I went. I drove from Tuscaloosa, so it's only like three hours, three and a half hours. So I got up, drove on Saturday morning, was on the Grove, hanging out with friends, and then the game started. Actually, and we we left and drove back. But so I really was only there for a few hours. But yeah, I was at Alabama. Game. Alabama won that day, but it was a good time. And like, like I said, my experience was was great there. Um, they do, they do a lot of great stuff down there, and a lot of folks have moved on since then to different places. Steve moved here, and I came with. And But it's uh, a really, really great place, and I really enjoyed my time in Oxford. You ever, you ever experienced something where you wish there was, like, a camera on you to see if you guys, like, cross paths, like, in the Grove or something? Yeah. Because well, like, I, I thought about that when we had Blair on, and I we found the story that I wrote about a game that he played here, and, like, what if we just cross paths? Like, hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? And then years later, we work together. It's like, yeah. It's, it's just – it's crazy. Well, when he said that that was his first game at Ole Miss, I was like, I was there. I was a freshman in college. I went down for fun, and we had decided to go down the night before. I mean, it was late. Yeah. All of our, a whole bunch of our friends had already gone down, so everyone had went. Um, and my closest friend at the time said, "Oh, should we go?" She said, "I know someone can who can who would drive us there." And so we just got up at six a.m. and went. But we had decided the night before it was a really whim decision, and then Tony's like, "That's my first game." They're on you the grove. Me, They're on the grove, and Nikki's like, "I think that's the former Buffalo quarterback." <laughs> that's gonna be my boss. <laughs> she probably saw me holding a Twitter mirror. Do you know what those are? Anybody know what no. that is? No. I don't know. It was like basically an iPad that they Steve put. Steve knows. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So SEC Nation was there because it was the biggest game of the week, and I, I, they put me in charge of the Twitter mirror, which was just basically an iPad in this blue case that had like it was like looked like a mirror. And so you walk around and you like basically get selfies on that. So I was just doing social media. That was oh, kind of okay. my duty for the for that particular portion. So you probably saw me in the Grove walking around with this. What if he did there. a selfie with you and your friends? Yeah, maybe. Tim Tebow was not happy when I walked up to him. He was very upset. Did you show him that the javelin trick? I was like, <laughs> I <did not>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably would have sold him though. He was not happy that I had that Twitter mirror. He was like. Just looking at me, he was not. Why? Like, no. I don't know. I think he was just trying to get in the, the groove, the and I groove. was interrupting his. You're like selfie, and he was like, yeah. no, no yeah. selfie. I have a much better Tim Tebow story when he came here for SEC Nation, but that's for a different podcast. <laughs> um, you went to UCF for a quick minute, and then you did come with producer Steve here. You were in Orlando for a hot second. Did you love the weather in Orlando? Much better. Much better. It than was very hot, but it was it was great. I would run around and fill up water water monsters. Oh yeah. Anybody on? On the interwebs knows what that is. So take anytime a, you ask for, for that one. 
water monsters, Tony Daniel has got you because he is used to that. Yeah, that's what I that's what I ran around and did at UCF for my my cup of coffee. What is there. that? I have no idea what you're talking about. The water monster. You know those giant blue jugs that you see around Faro Field? Have you ever seen those? For like, what's the purpose? It's for like hot days and oh oh for fans. For yeah. fans. Oh yeah. okay, sure. Those giant blue. They look like I didn't know they had a name. Water yeah. coolers. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Orlando, those that water goes very quickly. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and then producer Steve calls, and you come to Mizzou. You came in October, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so you came in the middle of football season. And what year is this? 2018. 18. 2018. Okay. So it was actually cold your first first football game because you said I need yeah. a jacket or. Yeah, I told Steve, I'm like, I just came from Orlando. I don't have any clothing, <laughs> so I can't work this game. <laughs> unless I have a jacket, so Which could you help me? him saying that, <laughs> I was like, that's such a move to make. You're w- one day into the office, and you look at your new boss, and you go, I can't work unless you <laughs> get me a jacket. I think you probably called Mike Karowski that day and hooked, hooked me up with a, with a nice uh, Mizzou. Yes, which like, you still have. His yeah. first night in town was house oh. was my Did first you night go? Night. Yes, we rode, we rode, rode bo- bird scooters over there. You Steve did? Yeah. Wow. Bird scooters, we went through the town. We. I wish there was a picture. Yeah, it might be, I don't know. Well, not be very good at research. Yeah, no, I guess not. <laughs> what a what a night though. House Dex is so important. And so now you've been here for five and a half years, and you've kind of moved through the ranks, and you've learned so much. Uh, what's your favorite memory from your time here? Hmm, it's a good question. I hate to go like recency bias, but the the Mevis the Mevis kick like I know everybody says that like turn like turn the season, but it really felt like. We did like everybody was really unsure of where it was going to go, and you know it just propelled. And I think on our side, like when things are going well on the marketing side, every, everybody enjoys the music a little more when you're winning. You know, everybody. We sold a few more tickets. You sell a few more tickets. You, you you sell out five straight games, and it's and it's a lot of fun. So I think that one, I don't know. It was just fun for us because we had we have we've been around for for a little while. I haven't been here as long as all these Mizzou fans and 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 Dave maybe, but. Um, you know, it was just fun. It was, it like felt like that kind of like solidified that this thing was going to go, yeah. go really well this year and, and give us a lot of fun. Had you seen a field rush at Mizzou? No. Had you seen one at Ole Miss? No. So that was your first? Yeah. Yeah. So like just like the whole day kind of played into itself and, yeah. um, yeah, well, I think that was. K-State's like a good, yeah, it was like a, they're close. It was a good crowd. Yeah. The fan, like the, the K State fans, are really getting after us like all day, like because we obviously go around and set up all the tailgating stuff pregame. Oh yeah, yeah. So all those K State fans were really getting after us all day long. Um, so it it was fun. Yeah, you didn't lose your hearing. I screamed quite loud. Yeah, yeah. Well that's maybe we can put that in the podcast. <laughs> you can put Randy's video in the podcast. There <laughs> is, yeah. There's a video. If you look on our PAs, you can. If you look back, you can hear. I don't remember screaming. I just remember. <laughs> At the field goal? Yeah. Yes, very loudly. I screamed so loud. We all uh, kind of were. We all cheered, but I screamed with this very high-pitched <laughs> scream. Um, but no, it's a great video. We yeah. were all very excited. I'm yeah. glad Randy captured that. I would agree. I think that was in my – that is season three, so it was really exciting. Yeah. I, at home, again, my first field rush. Yeah. Um, it was just a cool moment, historic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no – I th- what made it great was it made every other game bigger, right? And like mm-hmm. the more you win, yeah, the more the next game means there. more, and and that's the one that I think we'll when we think about that season, that's the one we'll remember as like this the launching point, yep. and uh, just to be on the f- I was down on the field on the sideline, and like I had not experienced things like that before in my current role. Obviously, I'd been up in the press box watching games like that or finishes like that, but to be sort of a part of it, and I put it in air quotes because I wasn't playing, obviously, but we're still a part of it in some capacity was was pretty cool. Yeah. So you're, you're quiet in the press box. No cheering. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you have qu- you're kind of the king of side hustles. I feel like you are, like, really great at the, at the side hustle. So w- one thing that you did at one point is you had a little bit of an acting hustle going on. So I did not know this. Dave so didn't this know this. is all news to me. So tell us about your time as an actor. <laughs> it's not much to, to write home about, but uh, Atlanta, actually, so that's where I'm from. We've mentioned um, I spent some time there for about nine months um, between jobs. So <laughs> it's a it's like an up-and-coming scene oh, for, yeah. for movies, 
TV, film, um, they they everybody in Atlanta says that it's like they're shooting more movies and TV there than they are in Hollywood yeah. now. Um, so there's like all kinds of, of jobs, acting jobs out there, like as like part time little, you know, background actors. Yeah. So one of my mom's friends did it, and she posted on Facebook, and you know, I was just like I said, between between jobs, between gigs, and I was like, all right, let's go give this a try. You get paid like 150 bucks to go and fake stand around and fake talk to other people for a few hours a day. I think I could do that. So. Yeah, I just the rest is history. I've got like a laundry list of movies and TV shows that I'm in. Uh, it's probably thirty or forty long. Of just really? Random, that many? Yeah. Random. He's I was, in I'm Ozark. In. Okay, so just let's brag a little bit and like let's <laughs> tell our listeners, our subscribers, our millions of subscribers, what they've seen you in. Most famously, probably, because don't blink when you're watching it. <laughs> Season two, episode eight of Ozark, just okay. because we've got a little little local tie there. Don't blink. Season two, episode eight, about forty. What is it? Forty something minutes. I yeah. think on the clock. It's like at the gala or the they're reception. At a, they're at an art gallery. Yeah. Okay. And I'm I'm having a fake glass of champagne when they pan around this picture and they're on me for about five, five seconds. seconds, maybe. But you wow. can really see him. It's not like oh, if I squint, I might see him. It's actually him. Yeah. So. Who did you shoot? Like, was Jason Bateman in the scene? He or was not in the scene. Laura Linney, I've, or I've never watched the show. Sorry. The the, the woman. The yeah. woman is in it. Laura Linney. Yeah, she's, she's in Oscar it. Winner. She, I mean, she's <laughs> like feet away from Tony. She's close. Yeah, yeah. but they shot that in Atlanta, which Atlanta. is the irony because it all takes place here in Correct. Missouri. You know, except for not one thing was ever shot. Yeah, here. I think they did like some over like shots. Yeah, they like, did some the aerials. Lake. Yeah, yeah, aerials of the lake. Yeah, yeah. It's shot at um, at one of the lakes in in Georgia. Incredible. So what else? Like, if, what else? If you were in would a we have Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy, uh, Super Intelligence, a movie. Um, we're in a little little Mexican restaurant, just having some chips and salsa and some margaritas. Um, one thing I will say that's it's actually funny and people don't realize. So you're, you're fake talking. I don't know if people actually know that, but you yeah. cannot make a peep. Oh, really? No, because Good it's a, like so you're you're fake eating things, and yeah. if you like clink oh. a little fork on the plate or do anything that makes a noise they'll have to cut yeah because it messes up their sound and they and so you you sit there for for hours on end and you do take after take after take and if you if you clink or you make a whisper or they hear something oh. that that shouldn't be going on they turn all the air off in these places so you're doing these some of these in summer and they turn all the air off during during filming wow. so you're you're sweating a lot how about how about the walking dead they did that in atlanta they did. Like a I never zombie? Got on that one. oh man um what's the other one that they did um is there, what's the one that's like um, in the seventies or eighties? Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Stranger Things is filmed there, but you have to have like different type of hair that they can like manipulate. I didn't have. Yeah, so I was gonna say <laughs> you've kind of explained they'll put out like a caption looking for X, yeah. Y, and Z. Wear this clothing, and you can. Yeah, you just yeah, it's like literally those like we need wow. people eighteen to seventy years old in this this race or whatever and and you have to have these types of clothes or this color hair or whatever and you just apply and send a few pictures in and they they email you and tell you you're on on the log do you have an imdb page oh come on no. they don't give those to because you don't have a speaking role is that super why super extra background actors but you're legit six five I mean, <laughs> that's on. why he's seen um What's going on? yeah, yeah. I, I did stand in for Pete Davidson once, and stand in means you literally just stand there while they set the lights uh -huh. around and set the other stuff. But he was in a, a movie with Taraji P Henson that oh, I was. Wow. And like, part of. did you were you signed up to do that, or you were signed up to do yeah. something else? And then they were yeah, like, they, "Oh, they, you're tall. Come on, stand here." No, they ask for those. They give you like a range. So he's he's like six two, I think. Yeah. So they's like, we need somebody six two to six five that can there can do this. So I had no idea of any of this. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole different world. It is. It was a lot of fun. Like you don't even realize what it all takes to make this stuff. Yeah, and there was some long days. I was there for fourteen and sixteen and eighteen wow. hours some days for a five second for a clip. yeah for a minute long of you know movie cool. clip or piece of uh, television. I'm gonna go watch your Ozark episode tonight. There yeah. you go. Um, 2023 was quite the year for you. You got engaged. You had a baby. You're planning a wedding. So. We just want to say congrats on that. Wedding's coming up. Yeah. But, yeah, very exciting. You have Ashley, obviously. So talk about Ashley, baby, everything. Yeah. Ashley is my fiance. She is uh, amazing. Um, we, we met here on, on one of the dating apps. Um, and 
like we were just really intentional i think that was the fun part so i don't know if we're this is like a dating segment but you know <laughs> I mean, I there's one every episode <laughs> yeah perfect you know it, it was just great and she's she's phenomenal she's like the most caring charismatic person in the world um and we have a beautiful son jace he's almost 10 months now um growing like crazy it's been flying by um i can't wait to get him out to all the sporting events he's he's seen his fair share he he rushed the field on <laughs> uh, uh, on Mevis's kick you know he's been down there for that he uh he's still at the age where he does better with like day games you yeah know? Day he's, games. he's got a bedtime the, the, bas- still. the basketball Same games is true this for year. you Nikki. i do i know Nine, all, all of our all of our basketball o'clock. games yeah i'm definitely in on that range now uh <laughs> <laughs> All of our basketball games this year, Jace had to miss. It was a, it was a tough tough season for the for the late tips for the Missouri Tigers, but yeah, um, but yeah, he's great, and I can't wait to watch him grow. I can't believe he's almost one. So I know, crazy flying by. Well, all right, let's go with your rapid fire. Okay, here. we do rapid fire. Obviously, Dave always makes fun. Not always I don't rapid. Always make it rapid, but hopefully it'll be rapid. So five questions, and let's start with your favorite place to eat in town. Um, flyover. There we go. That's Good a, that's choice. A new answer. Favorite professional sports team? The Atlanta Braves. Hmm. Um, favorite Disney ride? Hmm. I didn't even know the Disney connection when you wrote Rock, this. Actually. Rock and roll roller coaster. Okay. Is that the Aerosmith one? Yes, it I've is. I've been on that. We Amazing didn't ride. do that one when and we were. And it's mainly because of the music. That's, that's yeah. why I like Yeah, that's fair. Um, your favorite candy? Um, watermelon Sour Patch Kids. Hmm. Not the nerd clusters? Nerd clusters are good. They're they're, they're up and coming. Yeah. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Teleportation, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that, I want to get there quick. I don't want to drive. <laughs> I don't want to fly. I want to be there. <laughs> makes sense. Well, that was rapid fire. That was, was very, very rapid. rapid. You're welcome. Um, okay, our last thing that we have to do, and you were asking about it earlier, is your photo. But obviously, we, it wouldn't be fun if we just had one photo. So you have two photos to choose from. Um, the, obviously, just your headshot that I pulled off the web. Boring. But this one. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. <laughs> it's his oh. photo. How old were you? That's the Under Armour combine. I don't even know. Am I? I'm. Pr- that's 2008 or 9 probably. So You're at that yeah. camp and Dak Prescott. It's like, yeah. have you guys seen the guy from <laughs> the Georgia? He is six legit five. six five. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I, I think we're at the uh, the Falcon Stadium there. Is this the photo that we used for your 30th? Yes, one of those. No, maybe not. It, no, it, it might have been those, one, of though, one of these. So, combine photos. so if you couldn't tell, Tony and I, he's my boss, but he's also one of my closest friends. We've worked together. I mean, we're two of the like long standing people. And so Tony turned 30 a year and a half ago now. And so wow. we obviously Just had to. me on here again. It's fine. Goodness. We obviously had to make it like the most special ever. And so we threw him like a great birthday weekend. But um, we had a run through for football that weekend and so in the middle of the run through it just was like a picture of tony when he was 16 and it said happy birthday yeah (laughs) had to be had to be one of those photos so yeah you get to choose which one you want to put up there we can we can be fun and you can use the one that you want to use you put it up there though you get your job pick there we go thank you it's about time Oh, God. <laughs> First one. It's all right. He can do everything. Look at that. What is that? Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank Hopefully you for grilling me. I didn't bully you too much. Uh, not too much. I just have so many fun stories. <laughs> I learned more in this one than I probably in any other podcast we've done. See? So That's what this go. is all about. That's the whole point. I'll send you my movie list and you can check out yeah. some of <laughs> Yes. All of the movies you can watch Tony fake eating well, you in the back. You have to tell me exactly when you're on, too. Yeah, so that's, can, like, a, that's the hard part. When you're in so much, you're just you're just <laughs> such a great actor. You're just in so many films. So many I just can't even remember what it, where I am. Where you're at. No, I, I don't. I haven't even watched like a third of the things that I'm in. So yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Tony. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. This episode of Mizzou Storytellers on the Inside Mizzou Athletics Podcast is brought to you by Raceline Alternative Energy. Raceline Alternative Energy is working for a better future in rural Missouri. They are working to restore millions of acres of native prairie plants, which can be harvested in to produce highly valuable clean energy called prairie power. Visit them online at racelinealternativeenergy.com. Well, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Tony was great. I'm glad that I know I kind of poked fun at him, and I I didn't want to, but I, I do know Tony so well, and he is one of my close friends. So I, it, some things just really hit me, and I was like, oh, this is a funny story. I have to share this. But yeah. you kind of said it. You learned a lot about him, and you've worked with him now for Seven, seven months. months yeah and i you know like 
Tony and I are our, our jobs are pretty related or, or they they overlap a lot. So I get and more so lately it seems like. So I get to see him up close work and like he's just a worker. That's what yeah. I would describe him. Like he can do anything it seems like and his his work ethic his um just his his energy mm -hmm. it's 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 really cool and i think he can relate to so many different kinds of people and and th i love the the part that he was a college athlete like, yeah and there's we've mentioned this before where so many people in our administration did play college athletics and he was you know he he didn't play a lot but he was you know on a division one roster f yeah. fbs roster for five years and and like he said went to a lot of cool places and got to see it up close and I, I, that kind of experience is you know invaluable well and i think you saw his attitude and how he has talked about how it was the best experience and yeah. he may not have started every game and he may not have had all the snaps that he wanted but he was told this is your role and he really took it and ran and that's the attitude he has with everything um mizzou madness which we've talked about when we did it two years ago we didn't really know what it was going to look like it was the first time doing it and yeah. he took a heavy lift of it and he took a heavy lift this past year but my dad was in town and Tony was just running around trying to figure things out and my dad looked at me the next day and he's like you work hard but Tony Daniel works harder and I was like thanks dad <laughs> thanks. Um, but no my dad thinks that Tony is like seriously the hardest worker and I would agree I mean I, I've seen him do do so much but yeah it's been fun to he's helped me grow a lot as a person and as an employee um and so i'm super grateful and it's been fun to just work with him and grow the marketing department as a whole i think we've done the two of us have you know seen it through a lot and have been able to accomplish a lot of great things but yeah. he's he's a 10 out of 10 person and he's a 10 out of 10 employee so yeah a couple months ago tony and i did like a joint zoom with the springfield news leader newspaper for a story about what we're doing right with the fan experience because that the idea was that Missouri State basketball was struggling a little bit, and they, they wanted to get like, well, what's the Mizzou perspective on why? Why are what have they done right? And it was a great experience to like, you know, he and I um, kind of trade notes back and forth, and just l listening to him explain like kind of what his job is and what we do right, how innovative we've been on things, and he, he talks all the time about the driveway to driveway experience mm -hmm. of just making the fan experience. Um, you know, the best it can possibly be from the time they leave their house to the time they return home um, and, and so many different parts that he and his department, your department touches uh, for that fan experience. Because we're, you know, we, we, we compete against TV these days because mm -hmm. everybody can stay at home and watch TV, watch the games on TV. But we're trying to create that great, memorable, magical experience of going to the games, being there. I mean, imagine if you decided to to watch the K-State football game at home instead of going there that yeah. day and what you would have missed out on and so much of what happened. Yes, Mevis made the kick, Brady Cook and Luther made the big plays, uh, but but those people that were in the stadium that day, their day was also impacted by the things that Tony and his team and your team do too, which is which is the cool part of being on the on this side of of, you know, college athletics now. Yeah, he's so innovative and it, sometimes he'll be like oh we're gonna color outside the lines and i'm like i oh, know we gotta color inside the lines so he's done a good job with the department of really making us think outside the box and allowing the opportunity for different innovative things to happen there's really no crazy idea in the marketing department so which i wouldn't say i'm very oh no we haven't done that before yeah. not that we haven't done it before but sometimes it's like well how can we get as wild and crazy as possible and then reel it back in usually i'm not going to the extreme of like wild and crazy i'll go like one step further but um so he's really pushed me to think more in that innovative space yeah. on it don't be afraid to do something that might be so wacky because if it doesn't work we just pivot yeah, so yeah yeah i uh, i'm sorry we have we're like an hour into the podcast and i we did not mention our special audience today we did not mention our special audience but Go for she's it. here it's my mother she's in attendance she's behind producer steve she's been quiet as a mouse um i hope she's having a good time we haven't picked on her she's here in attendance so um tracy you still have to listen to the podcast though or even watch it online because we need the we need the page views and we need the downloads so this doesn't really count i listen to podcasts every week i search my uh <laughs> she my gets Spotify on me each week waiting for it to come out anxiously. she'll text me and be like where's the podcast i'm like it came out she says i can't find it that's on you you're that's your searching yeah. being bad not mine yeah well we're happy you're here thank you <laughs> do you have anything that you'd like to share about me that would give dave a very nice laugh or the audience maybe just know that i will be cooking you dinner How later today 
Uh, no, I won't embarrass you. I'll just tell you that, uh, you know, it's been a really cool experience to watch you on your podcast and see how you've grown and to see how you interact with Dave Matter. And uh, just to say that I am thrilled to get to witness it each and every week. Well, thanks. That's great. Yeah. How about that? She's she's the best. Had the I chance had, to embarrass you. I know she didn't. No, she knows. I, I have the best mom, though. So I, I lucked out. I know I didn't. She, no one. Cho- I didn't choose her. She didn't choose me. But you know, <laughs> it works out in my favor. Um, Dave, what you. Else do we have? Well, you dropped a huge bomb on us before recording this. <laughs> you were a model back in the day. Yes, I, I, I thought of it when Tony was talking say, about his acting. You career. can't just say, "Oh, I was a model." That's a child model. Okay. Producer Steve would like to know if it was for J.C. Penny or not. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested because uh, <laughs> his mom loved magazines. So this was like early, shopper, so. early 80s, I want to say. like the, So in the Sunday paper when you used to have like the, the ads for like Ooh. Target, Venture, Dillard's, Famous Bar, J.C. Penney's. That, that was me modeling the... Uh, the children's, the little boys' clothes. So interesting. I still have some copies of them. Well, my, my you better bring do. them in. I might have done a commercial. I think I did a Six Flags commercial, too. Did you ever model toys? Like, I want to know if I circled you <laughs> in, like, a Christmas wish list catalog. Um, yeah, it was, ma- it was mainly clothes from what Which, I remember. There uh, might have been some with me, like, wearing the clothes and playing with the Christmas okay. toys. Which is funny right. because you talking about your modeling days, I did not model, <laughs> but that's okay. I didn't. I was not the cutest in some ways and very cute in others um but we used to have magazines and my mom will know exactly but i you talking about magazines and you talking about the circling of magazines brings back we we loved what was it l.l bean was big one in our house i didn't Um, make it that far no, but yeah, I thinking <laughs> you you were just department store <laughs> yeah, material, department store. <laughs> but just thinking about getting the magazines, my sister, my yeah. and I would love to get it, and then it, they would sit for a very long time in our house. Sometimes so you'd look, and my sister would like circle what she wanted for her birthday or for Christmas, and yeah, so, so in, somewhere in St. Louis or wherever it might have been national, like there were kids circling me because they circling. wanted they wanted those overalls that I was wearing or those How corduroy pants, Some Oshkosh bagosh. Uh, I'm thinking like. Four or five. So do you remember? I, re- I do remember going on I set remember and standing there. Some of the photo shoots I do. You do. I have. How like, did you get involved? And I, why didn't you I don't keep know. modeling? I that's a question for Dave and Bobby Matter, Dave Senior. Um, I, I don't I don't know the story. I really don't. I probably did at some point. And you didn't want your kids to be models, or I, it, w- it was never really an opportunity. <laughs> they have been in. A, they were in a Shiloh commercial. Oh, okay. they, don't, they don't want that life, yeah. Nikki. They don't. Uh, yeah, don't you had that sponsored. life, and you said no. I, I want to know why I quit. Yeah, like, why that's did they? Why. I don't know if I just was like not not good looking enough at some age or something, or maybe hit puberty. No, it was before puberty because yeah. it was it was like four or five. I want to say. You stopped booking gigs. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Maybe we switched agents. I don't know. Was, yeah, uh, did you have an agent? I don't I don't know. I don't rem- I don't remember the details. I'm just so interested. Yeah, he yeah. he casually was like, "Yeah, I was a model." <laughs> I did not say it like that. <laughs> yeah, you did. I said Tony's acting stories reminded me of when I did some modeling work as a child, which <laughs> sounds ridiculous now to say it out loud. But so, so they were we talking did. millions of dollars. Yeah. Of um, dollars. What, no, what you I mean, in for your service? No. I was gonna say I didn't know how to ask. Like, what were you making for a modeling gig back I then? I couldn't tell you. Like, I don't know. My parents might have gotten like a new car for themselves or something. I, I don't know if it ever went wow. to me. I don't know if uh, there's not like some hidden bank account mm-hmm. with all my modeling money. <laughs> So many questions. Very I, interesting. Next time I go to my parents' house in St. Louis, I will look. I think I know where the pictures are. They're okay. in a. They still have like the catalog. I mean the ads. I I need all of them to just. I probably see. look a lot like a little Will Matter, because he looked oh, yeah. a lot like me. Would you say Will looks more like you or Molly? Well, me probably. And I what about so. Connor and Jackson? Um, th- it depends on their age. Like there's stages where mm-hmm. there's pictures of her being little where the. She, they look just like her. I do think Will Matter looks just like you. Yeah. I think I can see Molly, but uh, I kind of I had curly hair growing up, curlier and yeah. hair. Yeah, I think that I look like my mom, but when I, I'm with my dad, people think I look like my dad. So I go back and forth. People well, say my sister looks a lot like my mom. Okay, well I've never met Dave Barry. I've met Tracy now like three, four, five times. So well, that's a Dave Dave Barry problem. <laughs> so. <laughs> The power rankings. We've discussed that before. We have discussed that. My father hasn't brought it up, but my mother is uh, happy that she's okay. rising. Well, all right. We're keeping score. Um, we we have some questions this week. We do have some questions this week. 
Did any did any slide into your DMs? No DM sliding. <laughs> That's why they don't ask us questions anymore because we've sh- shamed them for sliding into my DMs. There's no shame in that. Um, this is this question kind of touches on one that uh, Tony talked about. What is your favorite Mizzou memory you've experienced since working here? I, this is for both of us. You've worked here longer than I have. Um, K State cake was really really awesome. I thought you were gonna say like every episode of this podcast. Yeah, well, duh. Um, no, the K State K State kick was cool. Um, I think there were a, a lot of moments last year during basketball that were fun, um, just like the sellouts and yep. the energy crowd. Um, gymnastics this past this year when they had they hosted, um, I believe it was the LSU meet. Yeah, was a. I haven't seen Hearns rock like that. That was really awesome to see. Yeah. Um, they had an incredible meet and they did well and the fans were really involved. So that was super fun. I do think the K State kick. I it just was something I hadn't experienced before. Mm-hmm. A field rush. That energy you knew it was early in the season and the momentum again, just as Tony touched on. But yeah. I think it was just a cool I you're not gonna see that again. Right. It's just not gonna happen that way. Um and so I think that was fun to experience. Yeah, I, I the Cotton Bowl was really cool. At the end of the game, I was down on the field, and I remember like crowd going nuts. Um, I'm walking out there and looking around, and like it, it was just a it's kind of a surreal moment. And Greg Hewlin, who we work with, turned to me and said, "Soak it in, because you never know if you'll get to experience something like mm-hmm. this again. You can work the rest of your life in college athletics, and a moment like this, you know, you have to." You have to take a breath and, and enjoy it. Not that we played or we didn't have anything to do with what happened right there. But we are, like we said, we're, we're part of the show to some degree. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're there and we're repping the university and the department. And, and he said, he said, enjoy this because you just never know when, when uh, if you'll get to experience something like this again. It's just really easy to get into, like, this is my daily life. And what I like about my job is that some days – I'm in the office and then some days I'm at a game and some days I'm at a conference event or whatever it is. And, but it can go so fast that sometimes you forget. So you get through, you know, a full season of soccer games and you don't even realize like I should be taking in these moments. The Memphis uh, men's basketball game at the beginning of the year, we went like lights out and it was really the first time we had a full, you know, full crowd. Yeah. We had our like foam light up sticks and we were doing intros and it just was loud and energetic. And it, it, for some reason it stuck in my head, like we're creating these moments and these experience for people. It, it was really fun. It was really awesome to see. And it was one of those where I just like paused and yeah. I took a mental picture of what was going on. So I could remember that feeling when I forget that feeling. So is that the game we threw ice cream sandwiches into the crowd? No, that was the game before. Oh, okay, that was fun. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. We've got to do that next year. we got to remember. Keep that tradition going. All right, here's another one. Who would be your dream podcast guest, alive or dead? <laughs> I mean, the, the the dead person would be alive, presumably, during the podcast. Is it just Mizzou? Or I think is it just, just Mizzou. Okay. That's how I'm reading it. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, we could think of anybody. Uh I think back like a long time ago for like people that, you know, I've never met and only read about in history, like a Don Farrow, who of course yeah. the field is named after, who was the AD here for long, like practically like a generation, uh, head coach Dan Devine, uh, who I did meet a couple times uh, when he was at the end of his life, uh, you know, historic coach here, iconic coach. I think Norm Stewart would be great, like in his yeah. peak. Uh, he'd be great for a podcast. He he should have if podcasts were around when he was coaching here. He should have had a weekly one because it would have mm-hmm. been. Enter- he had a TV show, but podcast would have been great for Norm. Yeah, I think uh, the first person that came to mind was Kobe Brown. I think because yeah. I was here, obviously, and just to talk about his experience would be cool. I know you named some some different people. I don't know. I'd have to think on that one. How about Eli Drinkwitz? It would be great to have him as a podcast guest. Yeah, he would also be great. Yeah, if if he's listening, if anybody. Over in football's listening. It'd be great to have him here. <laughs> Subtle? Hmm. Not so much. All right, here's another one. What concert would you love to see at Mizzou Arena? Now, for, have you ever seen a concert at Mizzou I've Arena? I have. seen two. Who have, you, who have you seen? I saw, um, oh my Was gosh. Was Chris Stapleton here when you? No. Okay, I saw Chris Stapleton We had Stapleton Thomas here. Rhett last year, and we okay. had um, Jason Aldean. 
Okay. Okay. So I've seen I both. That which were they, they were great. It Chris was Chris Stapleton was great. Um, Jason, uh, both were good. Jason Aldean was good. I love Thomas Rhett, so I knew everywhere. Do you know who song. opened Mizzou Arena? Who the first concert here was? No idea. Producer Steve, do you know? Yes. <coughs> Are you going to give an answer? Uh, it's he has a famous he has a few famous songs. One of them starts with Rocket. Uh, Elton John. Elton John. Wow, did yeah. you go? I did not go. No. Tickets um, too expensive. No, it just wasn't really like, what was it, 2005? It just wasn't really my lane right then. Um, But Hearn Center, so my wife Molly, who you know, she in her 20s, when she was in college, she worked at the Hearn Center, not so much in the ticket office, but more like the business office. Hmm. But we had a lot of concerts here back then, and her job was to be a runner for the artists. So she would have to like go to the grocery store to get their food yes. that they would have on their Our lists. Our interns do that now. Yes. So um, she had to get stuff for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Cool. Uh, Foo, Foo Fighters. Um, she had to fold their laundry. Uh, we still make fun of like the fact that she has folded laundry for very famous people. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, we had yeah. – when they do concerts and they ask for volunteers, a few of our marketing interns have done that. Mm-hmm. And one of our interns was like, I'm going to the grocery store for <laughs> Thomas Rhett. So Nelly did a show here. Cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember. What concert would you that. like to see? Okay. What would I like to see? Well, I mean, obviously my answer is Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. Um, I don't <coughs> know, you know, if that would ever happen. Uh, I don't know if our market's big enough for Bruce. I'd love to see... Um, Foo Fighters would be great here if they could come back because they played here. So it was like the weekend I think I graduated. So it was 2000. They opened up for Chili Peppers and played Hearns because the arena wasn't a thing yet. I want to say that was like May 2000. Yeah, I think Noah Khan would be great. He's my like new new obsession. My boys love Noah Khan. I do. So St. Louis show is sold out. I'm Mm. very disappointed. Oh, I know. My sister went and saw Noah Khan recently, mm-hmm. and I texted her and was like, mm, I'm actually quite mad at you. She's in Phoenix. She went, and she saw him, and Did she loved it. Yeah. Did you say Zach Bryan? He'd be great. Zach Bryan would be great. He's also coming to St. Louis. I've seen We've seen Zach Brown a lot. He'd be fun. Mm-hmm. I've seen Zach Brown. So have I told you I worked at a concert venue? I don't think so. so okay, so I – my. M- Mother, I cheered competitively growing up, and so oh, I know. you could, well, yeah, you can volunteer at the concert venue in the summer to, like, raise money, so my mom did that, and my mother being my mother, they, like, liked her so much that they hired her at the concert venue, actually, so then she stopped volunteering, and so she basically had two full-time jobs. She would teach, and then she would work at the concerts in the summer, and uh, um, she told me the summer before I graduated from well, I'd graduated before I went to college. She was like, you have to get a job, which I already had a job, but she said, you have to work at the concert venue. Um, so I was in the VIP section serving, and then I did that first summer. I did it a second summer and kind of helped in the office, and then the third summer I was their actual intern. Um, so I've seen a lot of concerts, a lot of different people. What's the best concert you've seen? Um, Not biggest act, but best. Uh, um, Darius Rucker was really good. Mm -hmm. He's always one that I say is really, really good. Um, I saw him when he was actually in Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, he was cool. It was interesting because the country concerts, you make a little bit of money. The pop concerts, you make no money. But it's the, like, rock. um, Who was... um, I can't remember who it was. I forget. They came and they were the most interesting fans, but they tipped really well. So that was, yes. Well, it was Fish, but it wasn't. It was the other one that's similar. You're gonna yeah. get mad at me, but that's all right. When I um, was, when I was in fourth grade, it's Dead and Company. Not yeah, Dead and Company. I know you're talking about. Yeah. I think that's who came. That's fun. Yeah, and they were Some, the most interesting. The, yes, they but they gave the best tips. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, in fourth grade. Big Dave Matter took me to see Michael Jackson. Wow. That's probably my best, like, most memorable concert event. My first was Hannah Montana and the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She, my mother, who is still here, is laughing because I can picture it. It was probably the best day of my whole entire life. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was a lot of money to go see Hannah Montana, but we did see her, and it was amazing. And have you seen Miley Cyrus? I did see like Miley Cyrus. I saw Miley Cyrus when I was 
different concerts. 13. She was Miley Cyrus. It was her first concert as Miley Cyrus. This was not Hannah Montana. But yeah, I saw Hannah Montana, so I was I was cool. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, there's, no, there's no age gap here at all. We're great. No, yeah. But okay, concerts, yeah. I think there would be a lot of cool concerts to come here. Okay, well, Michael Jackson can't play here, but we can maybe find some of those others. Um, Hannah Montana probably won't play here. Miley Cyrus, though, Miley Cyrus would, would be, be great. great. Yeah. yeah. So. How about our guy? He could play here. Oh, yeah. Our intro. Yeah. We could have him. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> he could come. Yeah. His new album's out. Have you listened to it? I haven't, but I've listened to a few of his songs. Yeah. So, Roman, Roman Alexander. Roman Alexander. We got to get him on eventually. He could be a podcast guest for us. Yeah, he'd be great. I stood next to him at the sideline for a game, a this football game year. in the fall. This past year, K-State, I think. And I did not realize it was him till later. Yeah. So. Yeah. He wasn't singing, so I didn't recognize his voice. Mm-hmm. Well, that happens. No. Do we have anything else to talk about? No, I think we're good. <laughs> I think we've covered it all. <laughs> Producer Steve is giving us the wrap it up yeah. sign. Yeah, you guys, well, you guys are about to go over your grocery shopping list here. <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We'll save some of these questions for next time. Uh, everybody has a beautiful story to tell as long as you're willing to ask the right questions. I'm Nikki Berry. I'm Dave Matter. Have a great day. See you next week. <laughs>